Yo, what is going on homies? It is your boy VSET, back, bringing you guys another video, and today's video is going to be a response video to all the comments and feedback on a video that I received a few months ago. The video a few months ago I made was a, res uh, was a rant video on why I believed Infinite Warfare would be good, or at least better than the previous COD titles that we had seen in most recent memory. If you guys want to see that video, I'll link it down below in the description below. Now, in this video, like I said, it was one of the most successful videos that I had seen in the past couple months. It got over 1,500 views, I believe, and by far, by far, by far the most commented video that I got on my channel. Uh, it's got about 250 comments, and then opposed to the comments of, yo, Visa, bro, you just suck, COD dick. Yo, Visa, you're a bum. Yo, Visa, you suck. Other than those, and other than the Visa you the go v said i agree v said you right i figured that we single out some of the most best comments that i had seen in that video and kind of give a response onto what i believe so the first comment here is coming from blue jazz and blue jazz kind of goes on a long comment here we're not going to read it all but basically what blue jazz says is to sum it all up is he, he's talking about how this infinity war team that is currently making this call of duty is not the same from prior and that is true i believe i said that in the previous video this is not the cod team that made cod 2 cod 4 or modern warfare 2 this is the infinity war that made mw3 and ghost there's a big falling out years and years ago you can look into it if you want uh between infinity ward and Activision, and as a result, that team ended up moving on, making Titanfall 1 and Titanfall 2 and other games for EA, I believe, and this Infinity War team is a different team now, uh, being run by different people and, uh, you know, working with the different team and whatnot, so... He goes on to say all that, and the biggest thing that I take away from this is he basically talks about how COD is kind of going away now. It, it Every year we get the same multiplayer and who plays the new campaign. So what he's basically saying is every year it's just the same thing, and to some extent he is largely right. That Now that is the biggest problem with annualizing video game titles is the fact that when you analyze it, like you look at Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed has now gone away because of the fact that it was getting really overmilked. Now the thing with Call of Duty is if we truly want to change, we got to have courage and our conviction we gotta have courage to not buy the game and i know a lot of people are saying they're gonna do that with infinite warfare but let's just see what the numbers hold and at the end of the day because at the end of the day the consumer we have a lot more power than we actually know and actually think you know we always want to complain and bitch and moan about call of duty but at the end of the day if we really wanted something to change we would totally support it 100 percent and not buy the game so that's really my biggest takeaway there he has a very valid point i mean when you annualize something it's gonna get beaten to death i think at the end of the day the problem with the people that are getting tired of the same thing every single year you gotta just move on you gotta play a different game you gotta play a different ip i don't know if all you play is call of duty but that's the issue call of duty at core is not going to change it's never going to change that, that this is what makes call of duty successful why would they change uh, a recipe that sucks i think the problem more so relays with us that's been playing for so long my next comment is coming from Johnny Hit That. Now he says, um, they care about money. Well, no shit, so does all of us. We were in their shoes, but back when AW came out, no one complained about being futuristic and such, and Infinity Ward were thinking this is what people want. But then three years passed, and people were complaining and planning, and it was too late to back down on millions of dollars and years of work. Johnny Hit That is 100% right. I believe there's another comment in this video that I do want to talk about a little bit, which is very similar to this, but it's a very good point, and people want to sweep this one under the rug like it means absolutely absolutely nothing but it, it is actually super important this call of duty title infinite warfare has been now in the development for years and years and years if you guys have no idea how game development works because i had no idea these games especially these triple a titles take years to be worked on that's why they ended up introducing sledgehammer games into the mix is to give these cod developers treyarch and infinity ward an extra year to perfect their craft now obviously with black ops 3 this is a whole nother debate for another day did it work i don't know black ops 3 seems to have its issues and people seem to be fed up with that game as well well, but that's a whole nother debate for another day that it's very incredibly hard to make a game I mean honestly I bet you this game was made long before the reaction to advanced movements and this game might have been this game was probably started right after ghost and honestly when in uh, Advanced Warfare launched, I don't really recall a huge outcry of the fact that people hated Futuristic. I feel like it, this train or this ball didn't really start getting rolled until BO3. So as a result, this game already had got poured millions and millions and millions of dollars into it. There's no way at any point in time they would totally steer away from that and be like, okay, well, we just put hundreds of millions into this. Let's start from scratch. I think that is largely part why we're seeing COD 4 remastered. Part of the mix is, originally, I don't think COD 4 was part of the game plan. I think COD 4 Remastered is a result of the outcry of, our, of the community, of the Call of Duty community, kind of saying, we don't want this. So honestly, that, that should be a little pat on the back. It seems like people are even being nick picky with that. But honestly, COD 4 Remastered is awesome, and Raven Studios have been doing an awesome job about that as well. Moving on to my next comment. Um... 
someone basically says it, it's a whole he goes into this whole thing how we don't uh how we want a world at war game and this guy basically posts the link of all the world at war games that's actually ever been made and he was saying how like the world at war hasn't been beat to a bloody pulp and i'll show you guys actually right now on what this looks like there are as you can see here tons and tons and tons of world at war games made so i know maybe not the cold duty franchise has covered it so much but yeah world at war 2 definitely to some extent has been milked Moving on to the next question, I actually think I have two of this guy's comments. Now, this dude, Skill, uh, shout out to you, sir. You seem like a fine man. I don't know. He was very aboard the Call of Duty hate train. That is for sure. He says here, if Activision listens to their fans, why do they not get rid of supply drops? Everyone knows it has made the games worse. No one wanted to go to the future. Name one person besides yourself that wanted the future. Well, I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are quite okay with Infinite Warfare being the future, but that's not the point. The main point of what I want to get to here is basically what I was talking about earlier with the courage of the conviction. He says, if Activision listens to their fans, why do they not get rid of supply drops? The reason they don't get rid of supply drops, quite frankly, is people buy them that's it people actually love them dude people buy them there are people that spend and it's not just the t martins it's not just the syndicates it's not these people that have this money to throw away that can buy all these things people buy them if people didn't buy them trust me they wouldn't be in the game look at grief grief's not in the game because of the fact that people don't get them these developers they have all this resources that they know they know how much people are, are putting money into these things why why would they take that away from them you know what i mean it sucks it's not the greatest thing in the world i gotta be honest i don't mind it one bit i don't think supply drops are harmful to the game i think especially if it's aesthetically it's perfect you know i i know there are guns in there and such but i mean it is what it is you don't have to buy them they have a system where you can earn them organically so it's not like a total paywall honestly i mean obviously it awards the people who might spend a little extra kashish but it's incentive and at the end of the day if people are buying them they're not going to get rid of it so i totally disagree with that premise you might be on these forums of the 12 year olds and people being like oh man I, supply drops hurt my tummy i i can't use my mom's card like at the end of the day enough people are spending i'm sure a lot a lot of money like honestly i bet you call of duty makes way more money today just off supply drops and you know obviously the sales even though they've declined than what they did back then because of the fact of how many people buy these things people think call of duty is in this slow decline and honestly maybe sales numbers are down but they are making probably double the money back from supply drops that people don't even think about this game call of duty is a franchise and activision is probably doing better than ever and it's and it's us to blame if you really hate supply drops never buy one in your life if you've bought one and you're complaining you're the problem not the solution uh, moving on to the next question here. This is another long one, so I'll just kind of get to the main emphasis of what I really wanted to talk about here. And he basically said, along the lines of, shout out to Brandon Sherwood. He says, I'm a very rare case in the world that I'm not very picky when it comes to COD. All I look for in COD in... All I look for is good maps and fun gameplay. Ghost didn't offer that for me, but most of the other CODs did. Now, Brandon, that's a very interesting point. And one thing that I do have to say is, I think... Part of the stigma and part of the problem that relies within Call of Duty today is the fact that our expectations are through the roof. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, we've kind of bitten the monster that is Call of Duty. As a result, we expect everything. We expect to have the nostalgia feel of our first Call of Duty. We have all these expectations of what our theme, of what our Call of Duty should look like. We all love different Call of Duties. And as a result, I think our imagination gets the best of us. I think we see these trailers, we get excited. That maybe doesn't live up in certain ways, certain aspects, depending on how you like your Call of Duty. Duty. And as a result, we're disappointed, we're frustrated, we're angry. You know, we want it to be like our first Call of Duty. We want it to be like our baby, the one that we loved more than anything. And that's just not the case. At the end of the day, it's our expectations that drive us. And of course, these guys create the trailers. They create the hype train that is Call of Duty. But I mean, we really take it to the next stratosphere. So I think that's part of the problem. I think the problem is we really need to have appropriate, appropriate belief in what we think this game's going to be expectation the higher the expectation the more it's going to fail you know i'm not saying have zero expectation but i'm just saying you can't think this game is going to be the next if you love call of duty 4 it's going to be called it's been better than you know you just gotta have the appropriate expectation to what you think this game's going to be and kind of also they always say the proof's in the pudding look where this game is going you know i called from the get-go i'm i stream a lot of zombies on my twitch channel and people always ask me like what do you think bo3 zombies is going to be and i told them straight from the get-go that bo3 zombies is going to be very very easter egg driven and so it was sorry about that guys the gameplay actually ended if you didn't know i'm actually using the bo2 theater i decided that i'd go back and use a black ops 2 gameplay 
play my first video I used the BO1 this is from BO2 theater back in 2013 you guys can see I went full noob with the FAL and the cat back in the day the cap off the like pop but uh yeah so anyways going back to the conversation that's kind of what I meant to say it's the proof is in the pudding you know you can kind of see where Call of Duty is leading to in the future and right now I mean it's advanced movements you know if you want to play boots to the ground you got Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered Moving on to the next question here, Sam plays games. Guys, BO3 and AW got hype before release, but they were bad. That that means it could be reverse psychology for this one. Think about this, guys. Now, this is basically, I thought this was a great comment, but the thing that I get from this is basically exactly what I said in the first video, is the fact that Black Ops 3 had expectation through the roof. Everyone from what, and at least in my circles and all the circles that I was listening to, everyone was talking about how this game was the savior. This was the savior for Call of Duty. The previous game was BO2, highly successful. A lot of people loved it. The game had its problems, but I mean, what game doesn't? You know what I mean? A lot of people love BO2. BO3 was the savior, and then it was the domino effect. We saw the futuristic, and we saw these things, and now, at the end of the day, I think BO3 is a fine Call of Duty, but it's, to me, it's not BO2. It's not BO1, you know? So I think, honestly, he has a good point he's i don't think he's necessarily making that point but the lower the expectation the more it can surprise people i really think this game is going to sneak up on a lot of people i believe i said that in my first video i think this game is not gonna be the best game best call of duty in the front in the franchise but however it's going to sneak up on people due to the fact of the minimal minimal expectation on this this video had or this game has already now, rounding out the comments here, we have another great comment from Andres Ramirez. Andres says, it's funny how people moan and complain about a game that hasn't even come out yet for something they were asking for. I find it extremely funny how the same people who were complaining about futuristic gameplay are the same people who were complaining about the same old thing during Modern Warfare 3. Activision at least gives something new. Most COD games are no question. There's stupid things in it, but people ruin the game. Even the greatest game, example, COD 4, can have the most douchebag player ever who ruins the game experience for everyone. I think people are overreacting, and that's not new to me. Andres, that's a phenomenal phenomenal comment i haven't really read any of the full comments but this was totally worth a total read and he's 100 percent right so just to give some perspective on what's going on here and what he's really talking about is back in the day of modern warfare 3 when that game was the game it was out back in what was that 2011 into 2012 people did not like it the the, the thing people called it was modern warfare 2.5 Modern Warfare 2.5. It was too similar to MW2. It wasn't as good. It was stale. And uh, this is true. These are all true things. I am not making this up. I loved MW3. I didn't feel like that. I thought maybe it wasn't as strong as those games, but I had so much fun on MW3. That was a great, great game. But even back then, that's really where the hate train, I think, started rolling with Call of Duty. And it's 100% right. He's 100% right. His point is we complain. We complain about MW3. We got something new in the franchise. We got Ghost. People compl people hated ghosts. People hated ghosts. People went off about ghosts. And now Infinity Ward is giving you something totally different as a result. I've, I've been saying this on my Twitch channel for a few months now. We have created the monster that is futuristic and infinite warfare. We would not be getting this if it wasn't for us. If you play the campaign of ghosts, do you really think that story was over there? Do you really think they didn't plan to have another ghost game or ghost 2 or whatever the hell they want to call it? Just something going off that and more of a modern feel. They totally scrapped that as a result of us. We are the ones speaking, you know? Unfortunately, due to the fact of the COD life cycle, it's every single year. They decided futuristic was the thing. I'm sure people think Call of Duty and Activision don't listen. They have been listening. We're complaining non-stop we need to figure out the right fights that we think that we can complain about and we're complaining about the stupidest little things we're going to future and guess what after this i bet you we're going back to past now i do have i believe one more comment here uh it's coming from codcraft codcraft says fans ask for past activision gives future dice gives world war one battlefield one is better and more realistic so i think he's basically making the argument here of battlefield versus call of duty which has been an argument i think for years and years and years i actually took the liberty and looked back at the sales charts and call of duty basically just stomps and slaughters battlefield Every which way, shape, or form, I will. Pre I predict right now. I'll say this in this video. I've said this throughout my live streams, and I'm not going to waver or back down. Call of Duty will outsell Battlefield, and it will be by a landslide. It'll be by quite a few million, million, million copies. Uh, I think Battlefield will probably make up some ground this year, but I do think Call of Duty is still going to absolutely trounce Battlefield. That is my prediction. Write it down. Book it. Put it in your little door, door notebooks, whatever. Door of the Explorer. Scooby Doo, where are you? Don't matter. Guarantee it. Book it. 
nail it, write it down, come back to me in a year. Just saying, one time, one time. But no, guys, that is uh, going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, I thought this would be a nice little cool thing to make through the fact that a lot of people had a lot of responses. This is We're a very passionate fan base. We're a very passionate community. And in some ways, it's a good way. some ways, it's a bad way. But nonetheless, we voice our opinion. We have no... We have no second guess about that. That's just what we're gonna do. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Please be sure to leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment and let me know if you guys want to see another video in which I kind of talk about Infinite Warfare and the current state and how I feel about it now, considering the fact that I made that video a couple months ago. So if you guys want to know how I feel now, I mean the beta comes out actually this Friday. It's the first weekend of the beta for PlayStation users. If you guys want to know my take and how I feel about it, please be sure to leave a comment. Let me know. Leave a like button. Leave a like. Leave a like button. Leave a thumbs up so I know what's going on. But guys, thank you guys for checking out the video. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.